I am Teacher Hanilet. Today, we are celebrating for math and science. We all know that math is everywhere. Imagine without mathematics, there will be a chaos. Today, I'm going to share to you three stories wherein you will realize the importance of mathematics in our daily life. But before that, let us sing and dance first. Are you guys ready? Let's start! Do you enjoy the dance? Very good! This time, let us watch and listen to the stories that I'm going to share with you. Are you ready? Let's begin! We should be finished building the 100 chart by now, Hank. How's it going? A little slow. I'm not sure where all the numbers go. I know where they go. Hi, my name's Jesse. I know all about the 100 chart. You can fix this? Sure. There are 10 rows down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And ten columns across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It starts with number one in the top left corner, and it ends with number 100 in the bottom right corner. Now all we have to do is put these numbers in the right places. Okay, Hank. Get inside that crane and start lifting. And if you could lay out all the squares in this pile, I'll help you figure out where the squares go. Sure, I can do that. Ready? Ready. <laughs> Ready. What's the first number? Oh, 12. Okay, start at the number one square at the top left and count down one row to the tens row. Then you count 11, 12, and there you are. Ha, 34. For 34, you start at the number one square and count down three rows to the 30s. Then count over 31, 32, 33, 34. That's the spot. Hey, next is 47. Okay, now with 47, you start at the number one square and count down four rows to where you see all the 40s. Then you count over seven. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Last is 85. For this one, you start at the number one square and count down eight rows to the 80s. Then you count 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Great job, Jesse. Thanks for your help. Sure, I'm happy to help anytime. And that is the first story. It is important that we know how to count numbers because sometimes counting numbers help us to solve problems like the story that we watch. Let us proceed now to the second story. Are you guys excited? Let's start watching! <laughs> oh, what are you wearing, Hank? My new swim trunks, Ralph. Makes me feel like I'm on the sandy beaches of Hawaii, instead of working. Got you a pair, too, in green. Uh, thanks? Hi, guys. My dad says you're almost done. Almost. We had eight steel beams before that last delivery, right, Hank? You know it, boss. And in that last delivery of beams, we got... Uh-oh, I didn't get the number of beams that were just dropped in the bin. And I need that for my report. I only know that we have 19 in total. That sounds like a word problem. Sure, a word problem, of course. And Ralph here, he knows all about word problems. Don't you, Ralph? Me? Word problems? Maybe I can help? 
Oh, that would be amazing. You're a real lifesaver, Jesse. So we know that you started with eight beams. And that crane just dropped some more in the bin, making it 19 beams altogether. When you end up with more than you started with, that's addition. I'm going to write a number sentence. Since we know we're supposed to add, let's start with this. Now we need to figure out the missing numbers. You started with eight beams. So let's put the number eight in the first space. The next thing we do is ask ourselves, what else do we know? Well, we also know there's a total of 19 beams in the bin. Since it's the total, that number goes after the equal sign. Because we don't know how many the crane added, we'll put a question mark there. That stands for the missing number. See, we've changed our word problem to a number sentence. Now let's solve it. One strategy for solving number sentences is to use a number family. 19 goes at the top because it's the biggest number. 8 goes in the bottom left corner. And a question mark goes in the bottom right corner. Do we have to build that triangle? If so, we're going to need more beams. Of course we don't. Um, do we? <laughs> nope. The triangle just helps us see the number family. Now, I'm going to write out the four facts that go with this number family. Okay. 8 plus question mark equals 19. Question mark plus 8 equals 19. 19 minus question mark equals 8. 19 minus 8 equals question mark. Hey, look at the last number sentence. What does it tell us? Um, you have nice writing? Thank you. But look, 19 minus 8. We can solve that number sentence. 19 minus 8 equals 11. The missing number in our number family is 11. And that means the crane delivered 11 beams. You're sure about that? Let's check. You started with eight beams this morning, and that crane just dropped some more in the bin for a total of 19 beams. To check your answer, you put the missing number in the first number sentence. Does eight plus 11 equal 19? Yes, we have the right answer. All right. Thanks, Jesse. Let's get this job done, Hank. Ready, guys? Hey, Dad, remember to take off your hard hat. Nah, we're good. Oh, we don't want to get our hair wet. Yeah! <laughs> and that is our second story. It is all about math word problem. I know some of you find word problem kind of hard, but with some patience, and strategy, you can answer word problem easily. Now let us proceed with our last story. This time, it is all about subtraction. Are you guys ready? Let's begin. <gasps> Gabriel! You're not sick, are you? Are you here to see the nurse? She just stepped out, but I can help. What's the matter? Is it serious? No, just a little embarrassing. I'm going to be a doctor. There's nothing you can't tell me. Well, I was practicing my debate speech, and I guess I got a little excited. What happened? I fell off the stage and skinned my knee. Boy, preparing to be president of the United States is dangerous. But don't worry, because I'll have you fixed up in no time. Sit. Okay, I'm going to make sure the wound is clean now. Dry it up with a gauze pad, pop on a bandage, and voila! All done. Now your body will repair itself within a few days. Boy, you are good. Thanks, Gabriel. Now, I just had to make a note of what I used. 
I'm helping the nurse keep track of how many cleaning wipes, gauze pads, and bandages are in the drawers. Want to help? Sure. These are the cleaning wipes. The nurse started with 659 of them in the drawer and has used 238. If we subtract, we'll know how many are in the drawer now. Oh, I get it. Let's expand the numbers to help us subtract. We do that by breaking them up into hundreds, tens, and ones. 659 expands to 600 plus 50 plus 9. And 238 expands to 200 plus 30 plus 8. Now let's subtract them. First we subtract the ones. 9 ones minus 8 ones is… 1 1. Now the tens place. 5 tens minus 3 tens is 2 tens. That's 20. Right you. And 6 hundreds minus 2 hundreds is 4 hundreds. Put it all together and we have… 4 hundred plus 20 plus 1. Which is the same as… 421. Now let's do the gauze pads. Okay. But I know a different strategy. It's called the grid method. <gasps> oh, I know that one too! Here, you can use this! The nurse started with 725 gauze pads, and she used 302. So, if we subtract 302 from 725, we'll know how many are in the drawer. In the top row, we need a 7 in the hundreds place, a 2 in the tens place, and a 5 in the ones place. Right! Now we need to subtract 302 from that. So in the row below, we need a 3 in the hundred place, a 0 in the tens place, and a 2 in the ones place. Now let's subtract. Start with the ones. 5 ones take away 2 ones leaves 3 ones. Now the tens. Take away zero tens from two tens, and we still have two tens. And seven hundreds take away three hundreds leaves four hundreds. So, our answer is four hundreds, two tens, and three ones. So there's four hundred twenty-three gauze pads left. Good work, Gabriel. And speaking of work, isn't it time you got back to it? Yep. Thanks, Dr. Deb. Maybe take an extra one, just in case. I'm just rehearsing my speech. What could possibly happen? Whoa! Yep, maybe that's a good idea. And that is our last story. I know some of you are not that good in subtracting numbers. But if you're going to use the methods given in this story, you can subtract easily. And this is the end of our video presentation for math and science. I hope the three stories makes you realize that mathematics gives us hope that in every problem, there is a solution. And remember, math stands for Mistakes allow thinking to happen. Thank you so much, kids. Again, I am Teacher Hanilet. There's a saying that if you can believe it, the mind can achieve it. Goodbye! Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Narito na naman muli tayo sa highest rating show na inaabangan linggo-linggo. Ito ay ang kapuso mo, kasoyer mo. Halina at matuto tayo. May nakarating sa aming team na ang isang paaralan daw sa lugar ng tansa ay may pagdiriwang na ginaganap. Di umano, isang event daw ang gagawin ng paaralan ito sa gitna ng pandemya upang matuloy na maghatid ng kaalaman sa mga bata. Ayon sa kanila, wala daw makakapigil sa kanila upang maghatid ng kaalaman sa mga Suyerians. Kaya lumipad ang aming team upang hanapin ang paaralang ito at aming napag-alaman 
na totoo nga ang kumakalat na balita. Aming ding napag-alaman na walang pagod na naghahatid ng kaalaman ang mga guro at kawani nito sa kabila ng pandemya. At ayon sa kanila, bilang parte ng kanilang Math and Science Celebration, muli nilang hahatiran ng mga bagong kaalaman ang kanilang mga mag-aaral. Alina at sama-sama tayong matuto dito sa Kapuso Mo Kasoyer Mo Math and Science event ito. Naranasan mo na bang matakot dala ng malakas at matalim na kulog? Nakita ka na ba o nakaranas ng ilang pangyayaring atid ng kalikasan? Katulad ng mga sumusunod. Ang mga pangyayaring yan ay natural at maaring anumang oras ay maranasan ng bawat isa sa atin. Ngunit, ano-ano nga ba ang tinatawag nating natural disaster na maaring maranasan natin? Lumipad ang aming team sa iba't ibang lugar upang mangalap ng impormasyon. Handa ka na ba, Suryans? Halina at ating panoorin dito sa Kapuso Mo ka Sawyer Mo, Math and Science event ito. sa iba't ibang uri ng kalamidad. Ano ang kalamidad? Ang kalamidad ay tumutukoy sa pangyayari o kaganapan ng dudulot ng malaking kapinsalaan sa mga taong tinatamaan nito. Bagyo Malakas na hangin, may kasamang malakas at tumatawag. 
matagal na pag-ulan at malalakas na kitlat. Lindol Ang lindol ay pagyanin dulot ng biglaang paggalaw ng mga bato sa ilalim ng lupa. Pagtaas ng tubig sa dalang pasigan habang papalapit ang 